Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, this is just a quick video, which actually should kind of have been a part two to not my very last video, but the one before, which was the, the Japanese CDs that I picked up. Um, Cause those were just part of the recent finds of things that I've picked up over the past three weeks or so. Um, and this is kind of a lot of the vinyl that I've picked up over the past three weeks or so. Uh, a lot of stuff coming in, you know, it's definitely been a, a lot of, a lot of new things just from the sense of, you know, a couple weeks ago or not a couple weeks ago, a week ago, uh, Billy Hurst and Mitch, you know, here in the VC, we had a chance to kind of meet up and we hit a record show, went to a couple of shops and picked up a couple of things, had a chance to hang out, which was really cool. Um, working at the shop, you know, I've been working at the, the music record shop now for, I don't know, a few weeks. So there's been a lot of credit that has kind of come in there. So I've grabbed a lot of things there. So just kind of, you know, just a lot, lot of stuff coming in, which is really cool. And one of the really cool things about uh, the music record shop thing with the, with the credit is it's really allowed me to pick up a lot of things that I just normally wouldn't, that I wouldn't go out and actually spend my own money on kind of thing. Not because they're not good albums, but it's like, yeah, that's a great album. I love that artist. I love that album. But I'm just as ha I'm happy having it on CD before I go pay thirty four ninety nine for it. You know that that type of thing. So it's been really good in allowing me to to kind of grab stuff like that, which is really kind of how I'm taking advantage of it. So uh, so yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean the the Discogs has been going pretty good. It's been about a week. I, well, I guess I started about the first. So it's been about almost two weeks now. I have about 600 pieces that I've gotten gotten in. And, you know, like I said, with the vinyl and the cassettes, I'm being very, very precise with the proper pressings and everything. So definitely takes time, but I'm having fun with it so far. So that's kind of cool. Um, but, yeah, let's just kind of jump right into it and we'll kind of go from there. Uh, I'm going to start off with two music things, as you, or music stuff. As I, you know, kind of mentioned in my videos before, I'll be sharing just some random things that don't revolve around just vinyl or CDs. So I'm going to show some more pillows again. I showed uh, three of them last time. And here's two others that I wanted to kind of show. Um, nice little Black Sabbath pillow there. Nice fluffy. Oh, that's the kind you can definitely take a nap in too. Very, 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 very firm and soft at the same time. And then the other one I wanted to show, you know, my pillows are almost as diverse as my collection itself so little Cindy Lopper she's so unusual love that one as well definitely my favorite Cindy Lopper album love it to death so one of the things that always cracks me up about this pillow is it makes me think of a, a story one time where I, I went out on a date uh, someone I had met on on match.com this is you know years ago and we ended up walking by a record store and we went in. And so we're sitting there talking and I'm mentioning all these groups and everything. And, and she's it's like, you know, wow, you seem to know a lot of different bands. I was like, yeah, I kind of like, you know, just whatever sounds good I listen to. And she kind of made a joke like, well, I bet, Ken, if I pick up a record, could you name at least, you know, three songs off of the album? If I just kind of picked one up, I was like, I don't know. I don't know every band. There's a ton of stuff in here I'm sure I don't know, but we can give it a try. And so randomly she picked up this album which was I thought was kind of funny because I knew every single track in order on side A and side B. So that was kind of one of those uh, those funny moments. And every time I see this cover, it just always makes me think about that. So anyway, two pills that I have there. So let's just kind of jump into a bunch of random stuff. So we'll start here with uh, Sunny Fortune. All right, and... This is Awakening, just a, a really nice jazz album. I actually picked this up at the the record show that Mitch and Billy Hurst and I went to. Um, I wasn't actually familiar with this particular album by him. I just saw it from a distance, and that cover just completely pulled me in. And I was like, man, that just, I need to know what's on that. And so I went over, and only had like $5 on it, and I, you know, pulled up a couple songs on my phone and really liked it, and brought it home and listened to the whole thing and it was really fantastic. A, a real kind of great mixture without going too deep into, you know, s there's a traditional jazz feel. There's also a, well, I could dabble in a free jazz, but not quite going that deep and that wild. There's also a, 
like I said, a smooth jazz type of element, some fusion. It really is kind of a nice little mixture of a lot of different things where you can kind of jump in and just find your own flavor in it. So a great album, great find. That, that was a new discovery for me. Next one here is Witchcraft. And this is The Alchemist. Another new band that I was introduced to by a guy that um, that comes into the shop quite a bit. And they were just playing this the other day when I was in there working and I was like, is, is, that, is that like a new Graveyard album or something like that? I'm assuming a lot of you guys know the band Graveyard. It's like, no, it's Witchcraft. And just the fact that I thought it was Graveyard was a huge plus because I, I love that, that bluesy, like heavy, murky, almost what I refer to as swampy type of rock. Um, you know, sounds just like just like Graveyard. So fantastic album. And was definitely very pumped to, to discover that. This one right here completes my Earth, Wind and Fire studio album collection on vinyl. And this is all in all. Um, I've been looking for this for a, a long time. You stumble across this album everywhere but never in perfect condition. And that, that was kind of always the, the challenge. And so I came across this at the record show the other day and I was very pumped. So Earth, Wind & Fire is finally, finally complete. Another really good album, almost, a, I don't want to say underrated, but from her catalog, I think a pretty underrated album. But this is Joan Baez, uh, Any Day Now. And, you know, she's kind of the singer, songwriter, folk, you know, all, all of that stuff that she's so well known for. I mean, she's one of the legends in that that genre. But this, without question, is at least so far with as much as I've discovered by her, my favorite album by her. And basically what she does is just covers a number of different uh, Bob Dylan songs on this. But I just really feel this album shows it shows her versatility a little more. Instead of being the same, you know, singer songwriter, uh, you know, acoustic guitar, kind of singing in the same tone, if you will, all the way through each song, which again, I'm not knocking it because I, I love Joan, but this just really kind of shows her doing more of like some of that, but as well as some more upbeat, almost poppy-ish type of stuff. Um, and it just really just shows her versatility a lot more of what she could do in terms of performing uh, performing music. And just a really, really great album that fits into that folk type of category. And of course, when you're covering Dylan's songs, so that gives you a kind of a head start on an album in the first place. But yeah, really, really great album. I highly recommend that. And the thing I think is really cool about it too is if you really listen to it, this is an album that can come out today and it would not feel out of place with a lot of the stuff that is you know considered new music today so really really good album there and this is the Ramones self-titled and this is the the Rhino reissue um, just want, really wanted to pick this up I was watching the news the other day and uh, one of the guys on there who has like some theme music when he comes in was playing 53rd and a third um, and I just, you know, just kind of listening to it and I was like, man, that's a, that's a cool song. I just haven't, you know, listened to it in a while. I have the CD and this came into the shop the other day. So I was like, heck, let me go ahead and pick that up. But, you know, Blixbird Bop and all other kind of, you know, the early Ramon stuff, very good album. And just one I needed to need to get in the collection. And like I said, we're kind of all over the place here. So now we're going to Buddy Guy. All right. And this is the um, first time I met the blues, 1958 to 1963. And this is just kind of some early buddy stuff. Uh, and usually kind of the difference I see in the early and the slightly latter buddy guy is that with the slightly latter buddy guy, um, a lot more guitar riffing. I mean, he always plays. I mean, dude can play his tail off. But when you start getting towards some of his latter stuff, it's almost like... He's calling out Jimi Hendrix from the grave kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, the dude can play. But in, in his earlier stuff, it's really kind of more, I guess what I would refer to as kind of straight, straightforward type of blues. But um, yeah, really great stuff. And I mean, you can never go wrong with anybody, guy. Like, a guy's like just a legend. 
Next here, we come for you all by Anthrax. And this is on the Nuclear Blast pressing or release. Uh, just a, their 2008 album, maybe not quite as big as some of their other albums, but you know, just typical party it up Anthrax and just a, a nice piece to have on vinyl. I didn't, I didn't realize that it had been reissued actually, so it was kind of nice to stumble across it. And then we'll go from Anthrax to Kenny G. This is Kenny G Live. <laughs> Um, I actually already have this album, but I was in a local store not too long ago when I was doing a bit of traveling for work, and uh, I saw this, and it was only $7 for, sorry about the glare, for a sealed copy. And the first thing I knew right away, I mean, I knew these typically go for 40 or $50 a pop uh, with the one that I already have, so I definitely was not passing this up for only 7 bucks. And again, you know, Kenny G is one of those artist is easy to make fun of you know there's just certain artists where it's just it's just totally okay to blast you know maroon five cold play kenny g it's like you know it's it's easy to to knock them if you will and it's fine i mean you can you can understand why in some cases but i freaking love kenny i don't care what anybody says and this album right here specifically is the album that actually brought me to jazz i never listened to any type of jazz whatsoever until hearing Kenny G live for the first time and I fell in love with this album right away and from this is where I actually got into discovering you know Coltrane, Hank Mobley and the more traditional jazz and all those legends and everything but uh, Kenny G live was the first album that said hey it's okay to listen to jazz uh, you know great songs like Coming Home, uh, Silhouette, Midnight Motion, uh, Uncle Al another fantastic song just, I mean, just some really good stuff there. And it kind of makes sense, too. I mean, Kenny G is definitely what I would describe as, as kind of elevator music. And I don't say that in the context of being negative, but I just mean, you know, his melodies and harmonies and everything are very, very straightforward, uh, very easy for somebody to latch on to and, and go, you know, oh, yeah, that sounds nice. You know, it's, it, it's not... You, you can hand somebody that and get them on a jazz roll to get the ball started much easier than you can hand them Ascensions by Coltrane or Strange Strings by Sunra. You're not going to get someone in the first time on something like that. But anyway, stop rambling, kind of move along a little bit here. This is Stereo Lab. Um, Emperor Tomato Ketchup, fantastic album by them. This is a nice three LP set with the reissue that just recently came out. Um, really, really good album. Definitely one of the, if you're just kind of getting into Stereo Lab for the first time, one of their first albums I'd recommend grabbing. Uh, I like this one a lot because it's it's one that shows the diversity of Stereo Lab. It has some of their, you know, softer, more mellow type of pieces, some of their more upbeat stuff. And in the context of what Stereo Lab does, this kind of gives it a great, a great shot at kind of the diversity of what they can do musically. So fantastic album, great album, just to kind of put back and listen to, uh, if, especially if you like their kind of, their style. And uh, what's her name? I always forget her first name. Uh, you know, her vocals, just, there's something about it just screams like 90s alternative, um, I don't even know how, how to describe it, but it's just, it's fantastic stuff. You can never go wrong with Stereo Lab. And then from there, we're going to this bad boy right here, Michael Bolton Gold. <laughs> and again, say what you want. There's not, there's very few times when I'm sitting in front of my computer and I'm looking on eBay or whatever else, just kind of seeing what's new or whatever else, and something pops up that makes me go, yes, I can't believe they finally... Okay, I did that when I saw this. And not so much because there was a Michael Bolton gold album that I always wanted, but my first thought was, if they're doing a gold slash greatest hits album, there's a good chance they can have my favorite song on there, which they did, and that's what got me excited, which is the song Said I Love You But I Lied. I don't care what anyone says, I love that song by Michael Bolton. One of my favorite let me seriously one of my all-time I wouldn't necessarily say it goes in like soft rock type of thing but 
it's just one of my favorite soft rock type of love songs. Um, you know, I, I just love the lyrics. I love the way he delivers it. Um, you know, just the, like, you know, said I love you, but I lied, which of course initially sounds like a negative title, but in the context of the song, what he's saying is I said I love you, but I lied because what I'm feeling is so much greater than love that just me just saying I love you doesn't really sum it up. I mean, that's kind of the twist on the title, if you will. But I mean, and Michael just delivers the hell out of that song and I freaking love it. Like I said, I don't care what anybody says on that one. Now, other stuff on here, like how am I supposed to live without you when a man loves a woman? You know, all that, that stuff. I can't stand it. <laughs> and that kind of is the way I've always been with, with uh, Michael Bolton too, is anything that pretty much was called a hit for the most part, cannot stand. You start diving into his B-side stuff, he becomes a man in my book. So I was really, really pumped about um, Said I Love You But I Lied finally being pressed on vinyl somewhere. That was awesome. Next we have, I uh, got a copy of this Megadeth. Sorry, I got a lot of glare going there. Uh, and this is the Live in Los Angeles 1995. It's basically just kind of a five track EP. Um, on here you have, you know, Holy Wars in the Darkest Hour, A Sweating Bullet, Mechanics, and Symphony of Destruction. So nice live recording there. So very cool pickup there. And this is one that Billy Hurst kind of sniped out for me at the, um, the record show, which is the, the Pretenders by Jackson Browning. Very great album there. And again, you probably know that one fairly well, so I won't go into too much detail. Trying to shorten the video up a little bit here, so I'll move along a bit. And then here you have the main ingredient, and this is the album Sweet. Definitely kind of just a nice, uh, what year was this, 71, 72, somewhere around there? 72, I think. Um, just kind of, a, you know, a nice soft soul type of thing. Uh, the one song that everyone would probably recognize off of this is, um, uh, whatchamacallit, I'm going brain dead now. Oh, Everybody Plays the Fool which was covered by a few different artists over the years, but great, cool album there. Definitely like that album cover, which is neat. Picked up a great original pressing of Yes here in fantastic condition, which was nice. This is Yes Fragile, so, you know, roundabout all that great stuff there. A little hip hop to the mix. This is Big Daddy Kane, Long Live the King. Um, another great album. This is one that kind of goes back to my childhood. Not childhood, actually more kind of junior high. But uh, one of the first albums that I really was kind of into when I first started grasping on the hip-hop. Uh, you know, the song Ain't No Half Steppin'. It's just one that, uh, again, when I think about my early hip-hop days, that was one of the first that I used to just listen to to no end. Used to love seeing that video on Yo! MTV Raps all the time, too. But... Yeah, Big Daddy Kane is an absolute legend in the early hip-hop world. So fantastic album there. Uh, let's see. Little White Snake. This is Ready and Willing. As you can see, it's a nice promo copy, both with the stamp and the... Or with the sticker, I should say, and the gold stamp. I usually avoid the promos with the white stickers. I just... I usually don't like them. But I also think a big part of that, too, is usually when I find them, you know, they have stuff written on there. They're kind of worn or whatever the case may be. So I actually had made a trade with Billy Hurst a little while ago and got a very nice copy of this. But uh, when I, you know, I saw kind of a nice promo copy at the record show the other day, for very cheap, too. Uh, with this, again, the sticker kind of being perfect and everything, I thought, let me go ahead and pick that up. So another classic album, you know, Fool, Fool for Your Loving No More, definitely my favorite track off of this. So another fantastic get. And I'll just show like uh, maybe four more here and we'll call it a video. The Smiths, Rank. This is another good example of what I was saying before about, you know, some albums that I pick up because of the credit thing and I wouldn't just kind of normally buy. But this is definitely one. Um, you know, great album, Legendary Smith's album, but uh, just one I wouldn't typically buy on vinyl. But yeah, you know, this one is the one that has um, The Boy with a Thorn in His Side, which again, one of my favorite songs by them, along with a few other things. 
but that was a, a great pickup as well. Same thing here, not one that I would typically just go out and buy, but having the credit, this was worth getting in my collection, which is Beck. And again, I won't go into detail about that album. You guys know that one inside and out. The last two, this is Ram. Again, another group that I was kind of introduced to recently. Just kind of some, you know, I'm not gonna say good solid metal, but um, I don't know. I probably have to listen to this one one more time to really take it in. I listened to it once all the way through. Got a couple different vibes from a couple different groups, but I think I need to listen to it one more time to really kind of, you know, see where it fits into my my overall metal world, if you will. But um, really cool band. Uh, can't really tell you much about. I don't know much about them as a band itself, but yeah, definitely another great great pickup and new discovery there. And last but not least, we're gonna go with G Wiz by Carly Thomas, or Carla Thomas, I'm sorry. Um, again, like somewhat of a newer artist. I mean, I guess most people would, in, in terms of, you know, the seven degrees of separation, all that kind of stuff, she's actually the daughter of Rufus, you know, when you think about, well, Rufus, everybody kind of kind of knows that. Uh, she, she, she's his daughter. So she kind of grew up in, number one, around that, performing really early on in her life as a young girl. Uh, you know, she was kind of there with the turning of when, you know, Stax Records and everything kind of came around. So she, 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 was, she was somewhat put into that category of like one of the queens of soul kind of thing. A lot of people say like, you know, Aretha just really kind of overshadowed her. But she, she's not quite as as soulful as Aretha, like not church soulful. She's more um, just kind of not mellow R&B. It's kind of hard to describe, but she definitely brings that feel of R&B from that 60s, 70s time period. But um, I mean, yeah, really good stuff. Just another one of those nice albums to kind of put back on and listen to from start to finish. Really good artist and somewhat of a new discovery for me where I heard about her but just hadn't really heard a lot of her music. So a nice little 2 LP set there. All right. So, yeah, there you go. I mean, that's, uh, I think, about half of the new stuff that I pulled in. And I'll try to come back pretty soon here and do the part two video and uh, show, you know, some of the rest of the new stuff I pulled in. And then my next video after that will be the 2020 uh, vinyl tag. I need to get around to doing that as well. So as always, thanks for watching, VC. Uh, I know it's kind of diverse, so people hate some stuff, love some stuff, but you know, don't give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Just kind of let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm much, much rather, much rather actually hear your opinions and thoughts about things. All right, appreciate it, VC, and we will talk to you soon.